All right, just going to do a quick little coaster, uh, this artwork. So we're going to make this into a coaster. Cool. Uh, first things first, I'm going to create a new sketch, and I need to define the shape that I'm going to work in. Uh, beer can is about two and a quarter inches, so we'll do two and three quarter inches. That'll be the shape of my coaster. That's all I need for now. Make a new sketch. I'm going to import my SVG on top of this. Um, that SVG I've already created. If you want to see the process of using Vectorizer AI, you are more than welcome to in a different video because I'm not going to take the time to do it right now. Um, I'm just going to import it as is. We'll scale in a moment. Uh, first thing I want to do, I'm going to select all of it and turn off the uh, fixing because I want to be able to manipulate this. I'm going to create a line. I'm going to hit X to make this a construction line, draw it from corner to corner. And we're going to put a point wherever the midpoint on that is. There's our midpoint. Delete that line. We don't need it anymore. In fact, we don't need this outer border. And if I look at the source art, I don't care about that white line. It's going to go away as well. Cool. Uh, now I'm going to grab that. And we're going to hit M for move point to position. We're going to grab that one spot that we made that's our midpoint and drop that at origin, 0, 0. Cool. Now we can grab it again. Hit the scale button. Select our midpoint. And I, you know what? I should have done something smarter. Because I can do this better. Before I delete these, the outside walls, I'm going to inspect this. 331. And this way should be close. 331. Okay, so this is 331 on both sides. I'm just going to hit redo and take me back to where I was. So even though this is a tiny bit smaller, I'm just going to use that number. I'm going to go back into my sketch. I exited out of my sketch. Grab the whole thing, scale, we're going to select that midpoint, and this is really cool. For the scale factor, you can do like 0.25 or whatever to try and figure out what you want, but that's the, the not-so-fun way of doing it. The What you want to put in here is the size you want divided by the size it is. So 55 millimeters divided by 331. Boom, look at that. Fits nice and neat. Now, that is more or less centered, but I'm going to go ahead and move it just a little bit to the left. So I think that'll look better. Yeah, that works. Cool. So from here, um, there are some sharp points on this that probably will not print great. But since this is just a solid coaster, I'm not that worried about it. Um, is there anything else we need to sketch? Not really. So there's a handful of different ways you can put these things together. I'm going to go back in, actually. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to edit this one, and I'm going to project that outer ring. I'll show you why. Um, I'm going to make this coaster three millimeters thick. I think that's okay for a coaster. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab that, that first sketch that's just the circle, and I'm going to extrude that minus 2. 0.4. Because I'm going to be printing this on a standard printer, uh, 0.2 millimeter layers. And it doesn't need to be super thick on the face. So, got that one. Cool. Now I'm going to turn this one back on. The one that has all of our different features. Um, first thing I'm going to do, let's assume that we're going to print the coaster in white with the features added to it. And we're getting rid of that line on the outside. So I want to grab our white pieces. Do I? Meh. Let's just extrude. Um, grab the outside 0.6 millimeters up. And I'm going to make sure that I tell this new... We'll do this as new body for now. We'll, com we'll convert to components later. Turn this back on, and I'm just going to grab any parts I can that are currently not touching each other and extrude those 0.6. Oh, and I left it set to join, so I need to go back and edit that. Come on, Fusion. New bodies. 
what we're getting is just a big old pile of bodies. And come in and grab more of these things since these aren't touching. This is kind of a lazy way of doing it. I could come through here and figure out piece by piece what color is going to be and do those all together as different components and whatnot. But I just want to make the actual shape of this thing because I'm going to, I'm going to do it visually instead of part by part. I'm done with my sketch. I don't need it anymore. Uh, I'm going to hit A to bring up appearance. And I'm going to go back to my art. So we got the uh, couple different parts. The chin, the beak, and I forget what you call this thing. It's got a funny name. So we'll show me my colors. Find my red. That part is that part. And what was the other one? That part? No. The beak. Okay. And then basically everything on the inside. Okay. So drag some white over for I. I'm going to do the outside in white. Uh, you do the mouth and the feature in the middle. Cool. Okay. And we'll go ahead and grab the bottom, make it the same color. All right, so we've got all of those components. Um, what I want to do now, if I come over here and just click on what I'm looking at, it tells me what it is. So I'm just gonna grab this and call it feature black. And that's another feature black right there. It highlights it over here for me. And we got that one as a standalone. I can't type. I'm going to take one of these and make a component out of it. And grab the other ones and drag it down into it. I can now turn off my black pieces. Cool. Uh, I need to grab the red ones. So that's 7, 6, and 11. If I grab them all together, feature red, check that out. They name each other all at the same time. Create a component, drag it down. Now I can turn off my red parts. Now what I've got left is my border and then my feature white. And this is why I care about this. I want to find my features that are white. 10, 9, 8. Cool. So I'm going to grab those, call them feature white. Create a component, drag those down. Now what I have is just the outline and the base. I'm going to merge those. I call this base. Make a component out of it. So now I have my feature elements. Just a, a thin little uh, well, feature. And I've got my base. And if I look at this, like if I cut it in half down the middle, See, the majority of this is going to be printed in whatever my base material is, and I can make that whatever color I want. I'm in my slicer. If I want to make that base material yellow, I can do that. So base will be a separate component, and I can name it whatever I want. So that gives it a little bit more flexibility. Come back and look at the analysis. Different components. Neato. Um, we need to do a little bit to make this not so boring. Uh, chamfers are our friend. I'm just going to throw a little chamfer. It's three millimeters thick. Uh, let's do 0.6. Why not? Just a little bit. Just something. Cool. Okay, that's a coaster. We're done. Um, if I were to go and export this, uh, I'll just call it Vineland poster as a step file and because I'm going to be sending this to the gentleman who asked for it I'm also going to go ahead and give him a 3mf file because so I don't know what he can work with and why not I'll send him oh wait that was the wrong way to do a 3mf that was the wrong way to do a 3mf don't do that um, do save as mesh when you do a 3MF. 
and then you can make sure you're telling it to use the high refinement. If you've never changed that option, the default medium is not so great. I don't use that. Uh, always do the save to save as mesh this way. Uh, so 3MF is good. And I want to give them the, the F3D. Go ahead and grab that real quick while we're at it. The other way you can do this if you are uh, exporting STLs, which a lot of people like to do. Turn off what you don't want to see. So in this case, I've got my black. Save as mesh. I'm going to change that to do STL. And okie dokie. Uh, Vineland black. I'm going to turn off my black, turn on my red. Save as mesh. Same thing, not changing any settings. Vineland red. will export oh, no 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 I almost did it again I'm so used to doing um, step files forget how to do STLs I hate STLs Vineland white and Vineland base Okay, so if I come back over to this folder, I've now got a couple different things to work with. I've got our 3MF, I've got our step file, and then I've got our STLs. Let's fire up a slicer. Okay, um, if I'm importing the STLs, I'm going to select all four of those at once, drag them over at once, Load these as a single object. Yes. Now I've got that. I need to have my colors. Uh, let's just pretend I've got red, yellow, white, and I need a black. I'll use that one. Don't change the color. Good enough. In my object list, I'm going to set Whatever I want my base itself to print as, I'm going to make the master object color. In this case, it's yellow. Uh, it has to deal with the infill. It's just easier if it sees the object as a whole is having that. Um, so I'm going to leave my base as yellow. I'm going to change my black to black. I'm going to change my red to red. And I'm going to change my white to white. There's my logo. Cool. Don't print it this way. Uh, because I want the details in it, I'm actually going to just use my lightbox face or my lightbox face profile because it works great. Flip that over so it prints down. Um, I do want to change on this. I don't need the extra flow. I'm going to turn that down because this is not a lightbox. It's a solid object. Um, strength, I want to have at least four on the bottom which is going to be the top. Actually, you know what? I want that thick. Five and five. Yeah, five and five will be fine. Um, this one's actually perfectly round. I could do concentric or spiral on the top. Not that I really care. I'm not going to. Uh, everything else should be fine. So let's see what that looks like if we look at the preview. The top is boring because that's the bottom. Some of those features are pretty small, but this isn't a light box, so that really doesn't matter. They will fill in. Uh, yellow will definitely throw, show through on that, so we're going to go back and we're going to ramp Arachne up maybe a little bit more. There we go. That fills it in nicer. Yeah, this one needs a little bit extra. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah be happy with that. Uh, that's actually going to have some thickness in it. Let's change to using gyroid crosshatch. Not thick enough. It's only one millimeter crosshatch. Won't do anything. Gyroid won't do anything either. They're all going to be meh. Uh, Non-intersecting. It's, you know, it's thick enough. I don't care. It's fine. That's fine. Cool. So we've got that. I could then, if I wanted to print a whole crap ton of these things, fill the bed. 
Oh, you can get more than that in there. Uh, make me at least four more. And a range. Really? <sighs> Give me at least five more. Six, seven, eight. I want eight in total. Fill with cotton. Clone. Eight. Mm, need to put our prime tower somewhere. It's not going to quite fit. Eh. Whatever. I'm not going to spend video time trying to place a prime tower. But yeah, there you go. There's seven of them. And that would print in like, what, probably two hours, three hours. I don't know. We got three and a half. Three or 17. I was close. Uh, those would work. I would change on this just as a general thing, print light to dark. So my first layer sequence, which is really all that matters, I would go white. Yeah, white, yellow, red, black. Uh, that would probably work pretty good. That way, just in case you do pull a wisp, at least it's not a highly contrasting color. So, yeah, that's one way to do it. Uh, those, would print, those would print great on my bamboo. Doing multiple material on the same layer, I think they'd look fine.